私の人に見ることはないと思います。私の人に見ることはないと思います。私の人に見ることはないと思います。私の人に見ることはないと思います。私の人に見ることはないと思います。私の人に見ることはないと思います。私の人に見ることはないと思います。私の人に見ることはない
I kind of freaked out. <laughs> I knew what a channel was, but how could that happen for me? What? All these synchronicities kept happening. Daryl's wife called, told me there was a channeling class, there was one space left, she signed me up. So I had to join the class. <laughs> it was like, you know, when the universe really wants you to do something. You get pushed. So I got pushed. Therefore, um, all of my channeling often has an ET theme. But I told the guides, the ET guides, if I'm going to work with ET energy, it has to be practically applicable on the planet I told them I didn't want wah wah stuff <laughs> it had to help our life on earth and I'm really so happy that they followed through with that promise um, probably most of you, even if you haven't seen me channel, you're probably familiar with uh, some of my books. Especially the oldest one on Prism of Lyra. Which really talks about our galactic family. That book was like the seed from which so many other teachings have sprung. So I came to Japan for the first time, I can't believe this, in 1990. And back then, channeling was really new. People were still kind of scared of ET stuff. <laughs> so I didn't do a lot of ET stuff at that time, although the book was out at that time. But I would say the last 10 years, the ET energy stuff has really accelerated. Now I'm finding that people can connect with the energy and understand the channeling so much more than in the past. In Japan and also in America too. Um, but I spend most of my channeling time in Japan. <laughs> so you guys that I see all the time, you really help me bring in this information because I'm everything's usually born in Japan first before it's brought to America. Therefore, I'm very, very grateful for that. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you for your support and your energy. So tonight, you're going to see a channeling. Um, I'm not sure who's going to come through. It will most likely be either Sasha or Jermaine. Sasha is the uh, the being from the Pleiades that I channel. She also says she's my future self. I've been channeling her now for about 30 years. Um, and she tends to come through, because she's a physical being on another star system, she can relate to us having bodies. 
、えーとえーとえー、3種は、ね、宇宙人ですけど肉体を持っていますので、えー、まだ肉体を持っている、えー、私たちの、えー、気持ちが分かるようです。So very often she comes through when she wants to talk about things that are really relevant to us as humans on the planet. I suspect she might come through tonight, but I can always be surprised. <laughs> The other one calls himself Germain. It's not Saint Germain.、Uh, in English, the word Germain has a specific meaning. It means coming from the same source. It can also mean relevant.、Um, so he chose that name just to express the idea that his consciousness system comes from the same source of all that we all do. この名前を選んだ意味は、ジャーメンという意識体系が私たちと同じ源から来ているということを表すためです。The best way to describe it is that if our entire galactic family all finished all their, their work and ascended and became a group consciousness, that would be like what your name is. But he's kind of otaku. <laughs> And he, he's, he loves like really esoteric stuff. And he gives people headaches sometimes. <laughs> He'll be coming over the weekend at the card workshop for sure. But he might surprise us tonight. So you'll see that my eyes will be closed when I channel. I go into a, a, a kind of a trance state. It's very, it's very comfortable experience.、Uh, because of that, I just ask that when I go into the channeling state and also when I'm coming back out, that you just remain seated and quiet. Because everything is magnified for me at that time. The basic plan is that usually there's a lecture that comes first.、Um, They've given me a plan. We'll see if we stick to it. <laughs> we'll have a toilet break. We'll have QA. And I think、uh, they also want to do an energy exercise with you, a type of meditation at the end. I think there was a, some confusion, maybe the title that was written for tonight. It's supposed to be、um, Galactic Energy Guide for 2018. So I'm not sure what you thought. You were coming to see tonight. <laughs> But that's what it generally is going to be tonight.、Um, and the details will be a surprise to me. We have to fix this. Is it too echoey? It's. Is that the mic of the chosen? Is that the mic of the Sometimes the people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one, two, one, two. Better. One, two. Hello. Yeah, I think. Uh, uh, uh. Let's talk at the same time. Talk at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear us? I think that's better.
Okay, so it won't take long for me to make the connection, and then we'll start, and we'll see what adventure we're going to have tonight. I have a feeling it will be an adventure. As Lisa said in the introduction, we did want to come tonight because some of what we want to discuss tonight might be a bit abstract. And we feel it would be best if someone with a body <laughs> spoke to you rather than a group consciousness that is even more abstract. So as you heard tonight, one of the themes for tonight is the Galactic Energy Guide for 2018. But much of what we're going to talk about is, is not just limited to this year. As many of you know, we often throw a lot of ideas into one uh, lecture. And we always want to help you be able to see a bigger picture. So before we begin, there's a couple of things we want to review uh, we know there are some new people, but we're going to try to review them very quickly. Because they are concepts to understand so we can go further with what we want to talk about tonight. First of all, those of you, of course, who have attended workshops or read some of the books, you understand what we're talking about when we talk about the transition from third to fourth density. But basically for those that maybe have no idea what we're talking about, we'll give you a very simplistic explanation. When consciousness separates from the original source, it goes through a cycle of evolution. And the cycle of evolution means that it first experiences the deepest expression of separation possible. <laughs> And that deepest expression of separation is when you incarnate as individual beings on a physical planet. That is like the most alone that you can get, so to speak. Because on top of that, separation, you also lose your memory. So you also forget that you're part of a larger source. And part of the evolution of consciousness is 
to experience that deep separation and then gradually move yourself back into unification with your other parts, so to speak. そして意識の進化の一部とはこの深い分離から徐々に統合させて他のバラバラになった自分が一つに統合していくという For the last many thousands of years, your planet has been in that cycle of deep separation. そしてここ何千年もの間皆さんの惑星はこの深い分離状態にありました And thankfully, そしてありがたいことに You're beginning to move out of that now. 皆さんはようやくその分離から抜け出そうとしています。So that deep experience of separation and forgetfulness on the physical planet is an experience of what we would call third density consciousness. 惑星に生まれ、そしてこの深い分離と防御法を体験しているというのは、私たちから言うと、これは第三密度的な意識を体験しているということです。And as you begin to evolve, And you move out of third density, you start integrating your parts. そして進化して、第三密度から抜け出すと、自分のさまざまな他の部分を統合し始めます。You start remembering who you really are. そして本来の自分を思い出し始めます。Meaning that you are really the one source consciousness. つまり、自分は本当は一つの意識だった、本源だったということに気がつくんです。As that begins to happen, The planet begins moving into what we would call a fourth density consciousness expression. And so, 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 The beginnings of your movement into fourth density consciousness. 2012年というのは一つの節目であり、そこから皆さんは第四密度の意識に入っていったんです。Now of course it doesn't happen in an instant. もちろんこれは一瞬で起きることではありません。You've been moving toward it all along, but that's like the turning point where you really can't turn back, so to speak. 皆さんはずっとそこに向かっていたわけですが2012年はもう後戻りはできないというタイミングポイントだったんです。If you look at your own lives perhaps since the year 2012, you might begin to notice that, or we would say even earlier than that, 2010, 2011 as well, you, you might start to notice that things really started to change. 2012年、あるいはもっと前の2010年、11年の以降の自分を振り返ってください。それ以降、いろんなことが変化し始めたはずです。Like the old way of doing things or the old way of navigating reality wasn't working anymore. それはつまり、今までの古い生き方、やり方がもううまくいかなくなったんです。So therefore, consciousness on earth, people on earth have to learn New ways that are more in alignment with a fourth density expression of consciousness. そして地球上の意識、地球上の人々はより新しい第四密度的な生き方を学ばざるを得なくなったんです。So that's what we mean by the shift from third to fourth density. それが第三から第四密度への移行ですということです。Now, the shift from third to fourth density. それが第三、第三から第四密度への移行ということです。And If you、uh, want to know more about that, you can ask questions later about it. The other foundational concept we want to、uh, review tonight has to do with holographic consciousness. そしてもう一つ、えー、今日復習したい基本的な、えー、概念は、えー、ホログラフィックな意識、えー、つまり意識は一つのホログラムであるという考え方です。We know many of you have already heard this. We'll make it short. もう知っている方もいますので、えー、簡潔に説明しますね。But when we were just talking about how you are really all of you source consciousness experiencing separation。結局皆さんは本源の意識であり、そしてそれぞれの分離を体験しているところです。This is what we mean。え、それはどういうことでしょう。それを表しますね。It's an analogy. It's not literal。え、これはあくまでも例えなので、文字通りに捉えないでください。But consciousness in its original state, it, it, consciousness in its original state is just one energy system. しかし、意識の元々の状態というのは一つのエネルギー体系なんですね。All of you at your most basic essence is this 
<笑>つまり、えー、皆さんは、えーまあ、その、えー、ベーシックな状態皆さんの最も本質的な状態が、えー、これなんですね。But of course, if you want to experience this separation, ただ、まあ、この分離状態を体験するためには。You cannot do it from that state of oneness. えー、このワンネスの一つになった状態では体験できませんね。So、what do you do? えどうすればいいんでしょう Within yourself, then, 自分の中に you create a realm of separation. 自分の中に分離の領域を作るんです。And you fragment yourself into tiny pieces. えそして自分を小さな断片に、えー、分けていくんですね。バラバラしていく。So that these tiny pieces can have separate Experiences like a lifetime on Earth, as an example. そうすればこのバラバラな個々のピースは例えば地球上での人生とかいろんなことを体験できるんですね。この時長期間本来の自分を忘れます。でしかし、軸の部分、あなたは軸の部分ではいつも一つの意識なんです。So this one consciousness, この一つの一なる意識、if it's you, それがあなただとしたら、we'll、put an eye here to re- represent that one consciousness. ここに目を描きますね。これが一つの意識を表しています。If it's really you, then every singular lifetime you, that is experienced in the realm of separation is still you. でもこれが本来のあなたであれば、分離の領域で体験する個々の人生もすべてあなたなんです。There is nothing that exists outside of you. あなたの外に存在するものは何一つありません。This is a, a, can be a, a very difficult concept for the singular beings to understand. ただ、まあ、個々の、まあ、個人にとってこれは非常に分かりに,分かりにくい概念かもしれません。But for your next evolution of consciousness on your planet, it is an essential idea to begin to understand. しかし地球人が次の意識の段階に進化するためにはぜひとも理解していただきたい概念です。Forgive us for using this analogy again. もう一回この例えを使って申し訳ないのですが。But, you know, in, if you have a photograph of, of an apple, 何度も使っている例えですね。リンゴの写真があったとします。You tear it up. それをビリビリに炙って。And then the little pieces become like jigsaw puzzles. That's a linear way of looking at reality. But that's not who you are. If you have holographic film, and there's a picture of an apple, and you cut that into many, many tiny pieces. Then you take a tiny piece and you examine it. When you examine it, you find that the image is still there of the complete apple. No matter how small you tear it, it's still. A complete apple. それでもそこに完全なリンゴが映っています。That is who you are. それが本来のあなたです。No matter how far from the source, どんなに本源からかけ離れていっても、No matter how much you don't remember who you are, どれほど本来の自分を忘れても、You are still a complete image of creation. それではあなたはこの創造界の完全なイメージそのものなんです。So that concept is important to understand for us to move to the next step of what we want to talk about tonight. じゃ次のステップに進むためにはこの概念を理解していただく必要があります。And it's going to lead us eventually to sharing with you about the galactic energy working with you now and in the near future. そこから、まあ、これから、そして、まあ、近未来の皆さんに働きかける、えー、銀河のエネルギーについて、もっとわかると思います。But first, we've got to come up with another analogy. まずは別の例えが必要ですね。We find that analogies are a really good way of communicating more、uh, complicated concepts. 例えや比喩というのは、より複雑な概念を伝えるために非常に大切なのだと私たちは感じています。So, we're gonna, we're gonna describe for you a game. 
It's like a game maybe you see at carnivals or something. It's kind of an old fashioned one, or so maybe these days you don't have it anymore. Imagine you have like a, a wooden tray, it's big, and there's holes in it. And it's on like a tripod, so it it shakes, it leans. And there's balls on top. So the game is that you have to tilt the tray to get the balls to fall through the hole. And it requires you, when you play this game, to have a really good sense of balance. There are times then the tray might fall like this. And this is kind of physics of the earth. The weight of the balls then rush to the other side. So this is a this is an analogy for how the universe is always seeking balance. Even in your laws of physics. The universe is always seeking balance. And you've become used to being human and you've become used to being physical. And have forgotten that even nature is always trying to balance itself. Humans have instead tried to master nature and make it do what it wants. But in a sense, nature always pushes back. Therefore, no matter how unbalanced things become, the natural energy of creation is always to try to move you back to balance. Why are we talking about this? Because we want to talk to you about something we could call a holographic realignment process. We'll describe it. If it's true, you are all one. And when you fragmented, there's nothing missing. You're still expressing a whole. And you can't ever tear off a piece of yourself. Then the universe is fundamentally always balanced. But when you have a planet, maybe, like yours, where maybe you see horrible things happen, and you think the universe is out of balance, and then you judge it, and you try to fix it, and you get more and more frustrated. Over time, you learn how to find the balance point that even within <coughs> what you might call darkness, something is always happening to balance it out. 
、えー、たとえ闇が存在しているとしたとしても、えー、常に、えー、何かが起きてそのバランスを取ろうとしていると思うとします。You just maybe don't see it. You maybe you don't see the full picture. えー、つまり全体像が見えないんですね。Okay. Hopefully, we've kind of laid the groundwork there. じゃあ、えー、ここまでで、まあ、基本的な考え方を、えー、うまく、えー、伝えられたでしょうか。Let's look at your earth now. じゃあ、皆さんの地球を今見てください。Right now on Earth, on the surface, it looks like there's a lot of chaos. And there's a lot of fear. A lot of unexpected things happening. And a feeling of powerlessness. If Earth is part of the hologram of creation, then even though what's happening on Earth seems out of balance, there's got to be another force that is maybe more unseen. それでも他の勢力があるはずだと、もしかしたらそれは見えない力かもしれない。But this force is moving you toward balance. その見えない力が皆さんをバランスの方へと促しているんです。This is the holographic realignment process. これがホログラフィックな意味での再調和ですね、平成のプロセスですね、バランスを取り直すプロセスと言ってもいいでしょう。So, there are energies then that Work with you all the time. Some of the energies, if you've been working with us before、uh, in the past, you know many of the energies we talk about, like Sirius, like Orion, etc. But all of those energies, both known and unknown, <coughs> そういったエネルギーのすべて知られているもの、そして知られていないもの、They are keeping the fabric balanced. こういった勢力が全体のバランスを保っているとしたら、so、as a civilization begins to move into fourth density, ある文明が第4密度へと動いていくと、One of the things that happens is that it seems like things get worse before they get better. 第4ミスに入っていくとですね、物事が好転する前に一瞬悪化するような、悪化するように見える時があります。This is because old structures start disintegrating. なぜなら、まずは古い構造が壊れていくからです。Old structures start disintegrating and the new ones are not yet fully built. 古い体制が崩れていって、そしてまだ新しい体制ができていないってことですね。And so there's a sense of Fear of the unknown. こういう時は人々は未知への恐れを感じます。A feeling of insecurity. そして不安を感じます。That's the period that humanity is going through at this time. それがまさに皆さん人類が今体験している時代です。And luckily, しかし幸い、there are energies to help you through this. 幸い皆さんが乗り越えられるように手助けしているエネルギーが存在します。We knew tonight's lecture was going to be a bit esoteric, and we keep trying to ground it in ways that make it clear what we're talking about. But we know maybe it still sounds a little bit esoteric. When we talk about energies that are helping to keep things in balance, we're not like talking about specific guides or specific individual beings. We're talking more about archetypal energy. But of course, also, For us, the way we talk about archetypal energy is always through、um, 
star references, let's say. So, I think that the archetype of 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 the archetype This one's a little bit more simple. Maybe we should have used this one at the beginning. That children's toy seesaw. If you have a, a, an adult on one side and a child on the other, it's not going to be balanced. So maybe you need two or three children. To balance it out. So, this is what we mean by when a planet maybe is experiencing a lot of pain or a lot of change, there are other energies, so there, there be low, let's say. There are other energies that come on the seesaw to balance it out. Well, we should have used that one at the beginning. Go <laughs> Okay. So we were saying then that there's a lot of disintegration going on right now. And what we're sensing for this year and Well, continuing into the future, is that a lot of unexpected things might happen. And that's going to leave people feeling ungrounded. Afraid. But we do have to say here that it's not just things happening in the outer world. It's also things happening in the inner world. We've talked to many, many people. They talk about what's happening inside them. Nothing's really happened in the outer world. But something feels weird. And they don't know what to do. This has to do with this change that we're talking about. The disintegration. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some star energy dynamics. And we're talking archetypes here, okay? So, Infinity symbol on the board. And we put a triangle on the left side. Let's just say that side of the infinity symbol with the triangle represents your galaxy. Now, we've, we and Jermaine in the past, we've talked a lot about duality and polarity. And this is a polarity, duality is a it's a template that is very universal. You're going to find that most galaxies have an energy opposite, let's say. Like the seesaw. So that everything stays in balance. So on the right here, 
We've drawn a square. There's no meaning to the square or the triangle, it's just so you can see them as different. The that side, the right side is is your paired galactic energy. So left side, it, these are wrong. <laughs> this is you on the left. Some of you know what the paired one is here. Anyone want to say? Andromeda. <laughs> so together, you're like opposites. On two sides of the seesaw. When there are challenges in your energy, the Andromedan energy, Helps to balance. So this is when we talk about the Galactic Energy Guide of 2018. One of the main energies that has already started working with you on that archetypal energy, uh, on that archetypal level, is the Andromeda energy. Well, if we're looking at opposites, and the, when we talk about opposites, we're talking very similar to the idea of a battery, like a battery in your recorders. One end has a, is positive charge, one has a negative charge. And together, those opposing charges create the energy to run your device. That's how the universe works. So, the archetypal energy of your galaxy, we would consider it to be male. Male energy is more structured. It utilizes form. We would say the Andromedan energy, archetypally speaking, it's more feminine. Less form, more fluidity. So, when a civilization is moving from third to fourth density, it often utilizes Andromedan energy to, kept, to help keep itself balanced during the transition. <laughs> because third density, <coughs> very rigid, masculine expression, very linear, in a sense addicted to form. Then, as you start to make the shift into fourth density, and Disintegration starts happening. When we say disintegration, we mean of the structures of form and of uh, habits and patterns that have been maintained for so long. There's a panic that starts. Because 
the people are so used to clinging to form. They've used structure to help navigate them through the reality. What happens when that structure starts disintegrating? They feel disoriented. They feel scared. Confused. All of that is a natural response as the energy starts changing. So we have here, some of you are quite familiar with this, four cards from the Galactic Roots cards. They are all the Andromeda cards. We're going to remind you of the themes of these cards. Number three, change. Okay, that's referring to now this shift from third to fourth density. Things may visually look the same, but you can feel their change. Card number four, confusion. So we were just talking about that as well, where you might be feeling some of that inner confusion and not even knowing why. That is extremely normal. And at this point, remember we're talking about the seesaw. The universe allows the Andromedan energy to come in and help balance on the seesaw. Because as you move into fourth density, that addiction to form and structure has to be loosened. So the Andromedan energy is extremely important to help that balancing process. The next card is the five. Fluidity. Okay, what does that mean? When you have form and rigid structure and habits and patterns, you're kind of stuck in there. You have no room to flow. There's no room for intuition. It's almost like an army just ma marching the same road. However, as you move into fourth density and the energy starts changing, you are required to become more fluid. And as those structures dissolve, of course, metaphorically, you have the space to be more fluid. Because the, the structures are not holding you in, so to speak. The mind is the realm of form and structure. The heart is the realm of fluidity. The process of, of uh, moving to fourth density has to do with a balancing of both fluid and form. So the, the final uh, card here of Andromeda we have is number six, which is new paradigm. What, what, 
where using that to express is to show you that as you begin this new shift into a more fluid state of consciousness, that is how your new paradigm on Earth begins to be built. Now, going back to this idea of the energies that are helping you, we've given you kind of a, a very esoteric understanding about how the Andromedan energy is helping you. But there are also other energies you're going to find becoming much stronger too. I know many of you in the room have done a lot of contact work with us. And in some of that contact work, you've really learned to feel what different energies feel like. Very often, the same familiar beings come. Like Zeta, Pleiadian, things like that. But what you're going to find now is that in addition to the Andromedan energy working in your mass consciousness, a lot of new ET energy is going to come too. The reason for this is because new energy that you've never met before it, it inspires you to move out of expectation. It inspires you to be comfortable with the unknown. So an example is, uh, we know some of you did the internet seminar last week. During that seminar, we introduced a new species called the Mira. Now, if you did not see that seminar, don't worry about it. But basically, they were a brand new species that humans had never connected with before. And there was lots of reasons why they wanted to connect with humans. But on the mass conscious level also, that new energy of something unknown and unexpected was necessary Therefore, in terms of uh, extraterrestrial energy for that we perceive at this time will be working with many of you this year. There's also going to be we sense a lot of hybrid energy. Now, hybrid can be many different kinds of hybrid. Even, you know, those of you that love Bashar, Bashar is a hybrid, so to speak. So, you might encounter new hybrids that you've not met before. All of these new energies coming will be to help you unlock from the familiar structured Reality. have to make a side note here and say that 
はい、一つ申し上げますね。
some of you also know that often we like to blah 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 while we're doing energy work. So there's a lot of energy work being done. We're going to continue with that uh, tonight as well. What we're going to do right now is, uh, in a moment, we're going to give you a little bit of a toilet break. Then we'll have a Q&A after. Then we're going to have a energy experience. See what happens. We would like to thank you for your attention. What we're sensing from you is that there's though mentally you might do not be necessarily absorbing everything what we're, that we're saying, what we're feeling is that on a deeper level there's a resonance. We have a, a process we're doing with you tonight, so we just finished step one. So if you uh, would please remain seated until Lisa comes back, she'll give you some instruction. We'll see you later. Much longer. Right, hello again, it's Sasha. So this, for us, is our favorite part. We love talking to you directly. Therefore, we invite your questions. And if you have a question, please raise your hand and uh, wait for the microphone. The question doesn't specifically have to be about the material tonight, though we will probably connect it to it. Who wants to go first? こんにちは。こんにちは。よろしくお願いします。プラクティス。あの、先ほど第3日、第3日から第4日まで今の宇宙人類が移行しているという話になるかで、私の解釈をしたんですが so you talked about our uh, transition from third to fourth density. Human pain, the pain of 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 the the pain of 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 the pain the pain of the pain of the pain of the pain um, it puts one's pains aside, and we have tried to uh, heal uh, other people with similar pains. That's how we have avoided the pain. Yes, very good. Hi, so I'm doing this now. So, 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 um, so since we live in this polarized world with the gravity, uh, can we say that the pain that we see in front of us is is also a polar? We would say yes, though we don't know if we are seeing the same thing as you. 
応答えはイエスですけどねでもあなたと同じ視点で、えー、を見てるかどうかまだ分かりません。Meaning, remember, we were talking earlier about the holographic image of the apple. あのさっきリンゴのホログラムについて説明しましたね、写真について。So、ultimately everyone has the same pain. つまり、最終的には誰しも同じ痛みを持っています。Maybe the circumstances of the pain are different. ただ、その痛みの状況などは違うかもしれませんね、人によって。And the pain is in layers. そして、痛みは多層構造になっています。But if you go to the core of the layers, all the pain is the same. That's the hologram. しかし、一番軸のところに行くと、えー、全ての痛みは同じです、えー。そういう意味でホログラムです。Is that what you are 同じ意味で解釈されていますかホログラムという意味は。解釈しています。Yes. が、あのそれでもその、どうしても人間って相手の痛みの方向に引き込まれてしまうパターンというのがあると思うんですよ。はい Um, even so, I think human beings have the pattern of being drawn to or sucked into other people's pain. その時にあのまだチャネリングの力そのものが私はまだ弱いんですけど、どうやってワンネスの方向にアンカリングすることが一番良いのかを教えていただければと思います。So, uh, uh, my channeling abilities are still weak, but if you can guide me how, to, how, I, how I can guide that person to the one,、uh, to the one nest. まずはおっしゃったことの最初の部分。Very often humans are sucked in, as you said, to other people's pain. 確かにね、まあ、人間は相手の痛みの方向へと、えーまあ、巻き込まれる、えーまあ、引かれる時はあります。Because it's easier to see their own pain on a screen in front of them. で、自分の痛みを目の前のスクリーンに見た方が、えー、見やすいからですね。So therefore, if you find yourself getting sucked into something like that, the way to、um, touch your own oneness, if you wish to say it that way, Is to, in a sense, go into that pain as deeply as you can. Into the other person's or whatever. Well, it equals pain that you feel. You're seeing it as the same pain. So, this is 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 the same pain. This is a process because when you let yourself go. Deep into the pain, we would say it's best to let it be your own pain. You get to the point where that it's like you hit a layer that is the holographic layer. Now, this is it's not an intellectual process, so it's hard to describe. But you know it when you get there. The, some of the Buddhist monks. Might call, might call it a very simplified thing. They might call it finding compassion. Which again, it's not a mental process. When you hit that layer of the holographic pain that everyone carries. That's when the heart can open and compassion flowers because that's when you see you are really all one. Now, we're not sure if we're addressing your question, so if we're not, please tell us. あの人間の場合は DNA を基準にこうその血の流れといいますかそれぞれの方の個性っていうのが多分、ね、先祖から流れてきてるものによって
って拘束構築されていると思うんですけど。So I think in a human, a human beings have DNA and、uh, based on that they have whatever they have、um, uh, received from their ancestors in the bloodline. サーシャンおっしゃられているのはその意識ということを基準に話されているのか、今の先ほどのお話をこう分分分析しますと、例えば。目の前に怪我をされて出血多量の人がいたときに、自分の,その相手の慈しむということで、輸血を仮に自分の体から与えた場合に、必要以上の,その量の加減が分からなくても、どこまでも血を与えるという形になって対処すると思うんですよ。そうすると、自分自身の存在もそこで召してしまうというか、死んでしまうというふうな形に人間の場合はなるんですけど、視点は違いますでしょうか、私。So,、um, for example,、um, but you seem to be talking、uh, based on consciousness. But in one of the animals, what you say, I feel that, for example, if you see some, someone bleeding to death in front of you, but you feel the compassion, so you give, give、uh, them your blood. But you don't know how much to give, so you'll probably give too much, and then you die yourself. So that's what I'm talking about. And do I have a different perspective from yours? We're going to have to answer this a little bit esoterically. And bring it back to the lecture tonight. Because you might not see the connection we're making, we're going to do our best. This is also a question on the more esoteric level of structure versus. Or doing versus not doing. Third density is focused on structure and doing. Fourth density is focused on. Less structure, more fluidity, and letting go. Letting go of control. So, we're going to give you examples in each framework. Third density. Super, super third density. Okay. <laughs> you see somebody bleeding on the street. You are so afraid of your own death that you. Go to that person and you do everything to save them. So you don't have to confront your own morality,、uh, mortality. And so you don't have to confront the pain of watching the person die. Fourthly, See somebody bleeding on the street. The action that's taken is not fueled by the subconscious wounds. It is as if the person is embodying. Their higher selves. The ego relinquishes control. And the person's actions toward the bleeding one are in the flow, in the moment. Whether The person dies or is saved 
is not a statement of failure or success. そしてその,その方が今死んでもあるいはスコアップですねそれで成功した成功しないの物差しにはなりません Because the person was acting in conjunction with higher self with ego not running the show でもその人はエゴにとどまらずにハイアーセルフというと一つとなって行動をとったわけですから。Person understands that whatever the outcome is what the outcome was supposed to be。どんな結果になったとしても、なるべくしてなった結果だと分かっているからです。So you as a species are moving from Cho third density。皆さん人類も超第三密度的な生き方から。Into Which means that sometimes when you have to take action like that, there might be a little bit of ego, but, but if you're listening, if you're feeling, you're also going to feel a little bit of flow too. そういう時はですね、まあ、行動を取らなきゃいけない時は、少しはエゴ、まあ、自我に従う時もありますけど、でもどこかで流れに乗ってるんですね。流れの中ではどうするべきか聞こえてるんです。Now again, we don't know whether we address the question. We were just following the flow, yes? <laughs> 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 ah, ha, ha, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Someone else? I just know that. Yes. Thank you for coming, my dear.
and especially for us human beings on Earth right now, um, it's going to be um, it's not going to be that speedy, mm -hmm. and that makes me sad. Mm -hmm. Well, we agree with you <laughs> <laughs> because these evolutionary cycles take place within galactic time. And galactic time is long. <laughs> so we know that maybe there are some teachers that talk about, you know, there's going to be some ascension or the ships are going to come and pick you up and all of that. That is not our understanding of things. Because we understand the galactic cycles of evolution. We do have to make a comment though about the pain and suffering. It is true that pain and suffering are very common for physical species. It's not because you're not spiritual. Or because you're punished for something. We'd like to give you a different perspective on this. If we're talking about as we were talking about earlier, the one consciousness. It chose to experience separation. It chose to have these really intense experiences as seemingly separate beings. It chose to experience sensation in all of its forms. The beautiful feeling of the cool breeze on your skin. The deep pain and heartbreak. Humans equate one with being good and pleasurable and one with being negative and Painful. But from the eyes of the one, they are both simply delicious experience. <laughs> <laughs> that sounded funny, yes? <laughs> we know to human, pain does not seem delicious. <laughs> but to a being, the one, that wants to feel everything, it is delicious. On top of that, pain is also used wake you up. Because when you suffer deeply and nothing can ease the suffering, that's when you turn inward. That's when you go into your spirit. And that's when you find your way home. So we'd like you to see the, the bigger picture of it. We believe in terms of Earth time. The worst of the pain and suffering is over. It's not finished, but you're over the hump. And one of the keys to your awakening as you move into fourth density is to allow yourself to use the pain, to use the suffering as a way to go deep within your spirit. え、それでもこれから第4ミスとに、え、入っていくための、え、鍵の一つがですね、え、こういった苦しみや痛みをあえて活用して、え、そして自分のスピリットの魂の中にも奥深く、え、奥深く入っていくための、え、道具として使って
Uh, this actually ties in with, we, we were mentioning earlier about the the internet seminar that was done last week. It was with a species called the Mira. And that species is at very, 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 very high fourth density. Cho fourth density, yes. <laughs> and they're just about to transition to fifth. Fifth is when you no longer have bodies. So before they transition, they wanted to connect with humans for a very specific purpose. Because they wanted to remember what it was like to feel. The beauty and the pain. That experience is not available to beings in the higher densities. So this is another reason why some of that energy is coming to you now. To remind you to savor the human experience. Because from the majority of beings in creation, they don't have it. As funny as it might sound to you, they're nostalgic for it. So there you go. Another question?
As one of those beings, we call them Zetas. One of the keys is that when you were asked to uh, what you were feeling, and you couldn't feel your emotion, that's the Zetas. <laughs> From that era, we would call it uh, first era, Zeta. That's a big confirmation. Your higher self must really want you to connect with this stuff somehow right now. So welcome to our family. Yes. <laughs> Any other question? Comment? あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
travels all around the world. <laughs> Channels in many countries. <laughs> but is it is the Japanese who have the most love for the Zetas. <laughs> it is amazing to us. <laughs> and that alone is proof of your connection. <laughs> You, what we found now, it's been almost 30 years we've been here talking to uh, Japanese about the Zetas. And it was very similar to what you said. At the beginning, there was a little bit of fear. But we always tried to share how the Zetas. Working with the Zetas can help you heal your fear. And it seems that even though you did not do any external or overt work, let's say, with, with the sphere of the Zetas, there was other work done, let's say, on the Energetic level. And it transformed. And it's really interesting you made the connection uh, with the, the atomic energy. As, as you know, the, the original Zeta planet had a lot of issues with atomic energy also. So not only is there that genetic connection between you and the Zetas, but there's also connection between the Japanese experientially with the Zetas as well. On that DNA level, or you could say on the holographic blueprint level, the Japanese carry the Zeta history. You know their history. And you can connect with their experiences at a level of love and compassion that a lot of other Groups on your planet cannot. So in terms of what you can do, well, it's hard to do anything until the planet acknowledges they exist, yes? <laughs> Therefore, what, you're, what you can do is continue to build your relationship. Perhaps reach out to them more. In meditation or contact work. Uh, there are many people in this room who have worked with their energy a lot with Lisa, so connect with them too. So the word is connect. Connect with the energy. And then it's going to take you where you need to go. Does that help? Thank you. They are more they are more than willing to connect with you. They're very excited to connect with you. So do you want an energy exercise? Or more questions? Ah, uh, someone has a question? Alright. しかし、よろしくお願いします。あ、ちょっと、あ、2つあるんですけれども、ちょっとだけ<笑><笑> 
あの交通事故に例えば会う現実があったとしますよねで例えばパラレルな世界であの例えばじゃあ交通事故がない世界もあったとしますよねでその上で例えばあの皆さんそれは交通事故がない世界がの方がいいと思いますよねその時に起こんない方が<音楽>あでももしそのエネルギーそれは交通事故に遭わなきゃいけないっていう現象を起こすエネルギーがその時にやっぱ交通事故があるっていうことであ解消されたと思うんですねでもしその時に交通事故に遭わなかったとしたら違った形でまたその交通事故的なものがを味わわなきゃいけなくどうなってしまうのかはい、はい、そしてあ、はい、結局その時は一瞬回避したと思ってとしてもそのエネルギーを結局解消しなければもう一回何かしらの形で現象として味わわなきゃいけなくなるだけなのかそれともそれでもうそれは回避して終わったのかっていう。<laughs> It's not complicated. But the issue is this. You're human. Are you? <laughs> And the human brain only understands linearity. So, when we talk about this, when we talk about this from our perspective, we are talking about it from the point of view of this. The answers are different depending on the points of view. Let's put it this way. Do you know the idea of a fractal? It is a repeating pattern that gets smaller and smaller. Hologram is, is basically fractal. It contains everything. That's the nature of consciousness. So, When an energy has to happen, you call it an accident. It's like a wave. So if you have all these timelines, this is dry too. So this is very strange. <laughs> you have all these timelines. And A wave moves through consciousness. So on one timeline, it's an accident. Maybe another timeline, it's a stomachache. You see different things in different timelines. The wave is moving through the entire hologram. But the ego can't control it, can't choose it. It tries to. It tries to say, I don't want to experience this. It creates superstitions. So it won't create it. But, 
avoids it. It can never avoid it. しかし決して回避することはできないんです。So third density reality then、えー、じゃあ第三密度の現実は is spent trying to control and to avoid、えー。第三密度では一生懸命現実をコントロールしたり回避しようとします。Often the more avoidance, the stronger the tide is responding to the avoidance. えっと回避しようとすればするほどより大きな波がやってくるものです。Fourth density reality, more fluid. When you're open to, let's say, when, when you know you can't control anything and you surrender, you become like the bamboo. So when the wave comes, Bamboo bends in a different way. Third density, the bamboo is like a cedar. A thin, let's say, a thin branch. It breaks because you're resisting. Fourth density, flow. So consciousness responds to these waves that move through the timelines. How you experience the waves depends upon your state of consciousness in any given timeline. When you're in a rigid timeline, There's a lot of chaos and a lot of drama happening. When you are in more of a fluid consciousness like fourth density, when the waves go through the timelines, there's not as much chaos and trauma. しかし、まあ、第四密度的な意識のような非常に流動的な、えー、柔軟な意識であれば、えー、波がタイムラインを通っても、えー、それほど、まあ、トラウマや、えー、痛みはありません。というのは意識が違う反応の仕方を、ね、しているからです。The point is, the human cannot drive the chariot through the timelines. ここでポイントはですね、まあ、人間は、えー、このタイムラインの中を通る車の Meaning the human cannot control it. We don't know whether we're answering your question, but the question we feel was asked more from a human perspective, which the answer would never make sense from that perspective. あのこれで答えになったかわかりませんが、でも多分今回の質問は人間的な視点からの質問だと思うんですね。えでもそれでは、えー、まあそう、えー、それではコントロールできないということです。Does this help a little bit? これで役に立ちました。はい、ありがとうございます。それでそれに付随した質問なんですけれども、あの例えば今度そのエネルその例えばまあ今回ちょっと交通事故っていうふうに例えでしたんですけれども、そのを味わうエネルギーがあるとしますよね未来に。どうしても味わわなきゃいけないっていうものを例えばあの悲しみさっきも言ってたんですけど悲しみも痛みも例えば喜びも楽しさとかも同じエネルギーなんですよねちょっとこれ確認なんですけれども本当は同じなんですよね。Yes. ってことは未来の,その交通事故を同じエネルギー分ぐらいのハッピーにもやっぱり選べるってことなんですよね。そのエネルギーをどっちに自分で感じる方いい悪いではなくって好みな方に選ぶ選んで解消するっていう進,、まあ、進み方っていうかで考え方はそれでいいのかな When you say you can choose to be happy, that's the first place we're going to look at. If you choose happiness to avoid feeling pain, then you just keep creating the same energy. 
However, we're gonna, so we're going to give you a different way of looking at this. This is the key to navigating port density. Ready? Secrets of the universe here. <laughs> Every moment, be open to what presents itself. If it's pain, be fully present with it and let it be your teacher. If it's joy, be fully present with that and let it be your teacher. Third density was about chasing experiences. The experience the ego wanted. Thus creating the split. In fourth density, totally different change. You learn that you cannot control reality. But you allow yourself to be present for all reality as it shows up. And as strange as it sounds, that's the key to happiness. Because imagine, imagine if your ego finally gave up trying to control. How much peace would you feel? It would be amazing. He would just lay there on the beach chair, yes. <laughs> With the pina colada. <laughs> because you realize there's nothing to do. That is what we were talking about earlier, uh, the very first question with the man bleeding on the street. Higher self then can fully embody. The higher self integrates with you to the extent that the ego is willing to relinquish control. And that kind of characterizes the fourth density experience. Secret of the universe. <laughs> あの、ごめんなさい。この目の前のものだったら物質わかるんですけども、例えばその今リサ言うじゃないですか、そこに。あ、そこに来る人は映像なんですか、物質なんですか。What is material? じゃあ、物質って。Material is only real from the ego. If you if you if you look at it from the one consciousness, one consciousness created physical universe. It's kind of like creating a movie theater inside of itself. That movie theater has stars and planets and gases and atoms. And it has humans. And to the different parts inside the movie theater, everything seems real. It feels physical. And so the physical beings conclude it's real. But the one is just watching a movie. <laughs> you know when you go to the movie and it's 
super interesting and you lose yourself in the movie. And you identify with the characters. That's what the one is experiencing. All of you are movie stars. <laughs> but as fourth density, as you get deeper and deeper into fourth density, and the, e and the ego gets weaker and weaker. It's like the, the, the movie projector, the light of the movie projector gets weaker and weaker. And the people in the theater begin to realize there's something outside of the theater. And they start trying to visit what that thing is. And that's when they discover they've been in a theater all along. They learn they've been starring in their own movie. That character on the stage is not who they are. That is the, also the process of evolution within fourth density. So you've got, yes, you've got some time left still to progress in fourth density, a lot of time as you would count it as humans. Progress. Uh, to progress. To progress. But as you go deeper into fourth density, the experience of life is totally different. Because when you understand that dynamic, when you understand who you really are, existence truly feels limitless in a very different way. So, your questions have uh, helped illuminate a lot of important ideas. Since we did not have uh, energy exercise tonight, we're going to give you <laughs> Well, it's the way the universe arranged it, yes? That means you get homework. <laughs> The homework is this. When you go home tonight, and let's say you take your bath, so you're sitting in the bath, really feel the water, and feel it as a metaphor for consciousness. Mm -hmm. Specifically, metaphor for Andromedan consciousness. Now, you can either get out of the bath and finish this, or you can do this in the bath, it doesn't matter. But imagine that the water is fully enveloping you. I just don't want you to drown in the bathtub. Yes. <laughs> or you can go in your bed and get under the covers and do the same thing. And let yourself breathe in the water. Now the water is really a metaphor for the quantum energy. But it's also going to contain the frequency of that Andromedan energy we were talking about tonight. And it'll help with balancing the seesaw a little bit. And it's possible also for some of you that the that Andromedan energy as you fall into sleep will be like a, a supportive energy that can help call in even more energies to work with you while you're asleep. 
でそして人によってはこのアンドロメダのエネルギーは寝てる間にもっともっとあなたをサポートするような別のエネルギーを呼び込むための、まあ、誘い水になるでしょう、so、ぜひ宿題を楽しんでください All right. Thank you very, very much for your attention your, and your wonderful questions. では皆さんのご清聴と、そして素晴らしい質問に深く感謝します。More than anything, no. Every, as, as you said to Lisa during break, everything is going to be okay. で、まあ、何よりですね、まあ、そのさやかさんがさっきエリサにも言ったように、すべては OK ですよ、大丈夫です。You have so much loving energy supporting you. Pain and discomfort is not a sign that something's wrong. Sometimes it means you're waking up. Much like an arm that was asleep, yes. Be fully present with the experience. And you will surprise yourself with what comes next. Much love to each and every one of you. And a fond good night. Thank <laughs> you.